All right, here we go. FS 600V into a Pro Stance 36 gravely. This is the one we're replacing. It's got a nice hole in the block. And the shaft length on this is four and a quarter. One and one eighth. Well, I ended up finding the cover for it. It says FS 600B. FS 481B. Choice number two if you can't get the other one working. All right, so when they were trying to put the engine in, I told them to get an adapter sleeve, so they got this one. It's uh, one inch to one and one eighth. Same exact model number, FS600V, ended up having a one inch shaft and maybe three inches. I found this little adapter sleeve extender, and now the new shaft length is four and five eighths. And every time I try to put this ring on, it would get stuck right here with the adapter. And then I tried to put the PTO on, and it would get stuck about right there. So it only go about halfway on also. They're all 40s. WD, let's put it all together. All right, so these are the keys it came with. Well, two of them are rectangle, and one of them's a square. So I ended up going with the square one, and it actually gets stopped by that. So there's no way you can go too far, and that's all of it together right there. So you know, this freely spins. This one spins with the engine. Seven sixteenths by twenty thread by four inches. So it should be two inches longer than the original bolt. Do this by hand so you can feel if you get to the end of the see I'm, i think i'm at the end of the threads already looks like about three eighths of an inch the bolt graveyard spacers that one it's about perfect right there perfect fit all right that's how we're planning on running it the way it's set up right now you have to put the pto on from the bottom because this won't fit through that hole. All right, and with the engine out, it's really easy to do the starter solenoid. The Home Depot starter solenoid. All right, we're just gonna go ahead and do the plugs now while we got a lot of slack on here. Starter signal. Right here, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the brown and white. Ground, PTO, maybe a resistor, ignition and ground. This should be the charging circuit, an engine ground. No clue about this one, but it looks clean in there like it's never been used. And this one to that oil pressure sensor on that other engine, which this one doesn't have. That oil pressure sensor, you would just put it in that hole. That's where it was, right on top of the oil filter. Diagram for it. So to get the spring on there, got a ratchet strap. So I'm just gonna pull it. Push it down. Oh, she's heavy. And all we're doing right here is putting the engine bolts in by hand. All right, we're just taking the bolts out one at a time, putting a Loctite on them, and just putting them back. One side of the starter solenoid has to go straight to the starter. So we've got 11 millimeter here. All right, so that's one half of the solenoid. All right, so we're gonna be putting this ground screw in that hole.
All right, so this is the battery ground. This is the ground for the harness. All right, next thing we're gonna do is ignition. Just wanna make sure they're snapped in. Next one's gonna be the charging circuit. It's on there pretty solid. These go to the solenoid. The ones we prepped earlier. But on these, it doesn't matter which one's positive or negative. You can have it either way. All right, so this is the charging circuit. Fuse, 30 amp, looks good. This goes on the other end of the solenoid. This is gonna go on top. One of these is the choke and one's the throttle. Good thing they marked these cables too. You should just put them in the exact same spot they were. Ten forty oil. It says one point eight quarts. So we put a little bit under two. It looks about right. All right. So on the fuel with a new filter so it's pretty good the vent line is gonna go right there where it's capped off and that's just for emissions right on there PTO has to go into the slot over here. All right, I've got to hold the key on it. I'm gonna put the last pulley on right there. And then the bolt. And the bolt has the spacer, the washer, and that special washer and some Loctite. Tap it and make sure we don't have a short. And that's popping. It looks like some kind of battery tie down goes there. I'll probably just zip tie it. We're gonna test the starter solenoid first and sort of prime the engine, get some fuel in it. So just pull the plug wires off. Fuel solenoid. PTO. And we're just going for cranking. All right, so that works. Just plug these wires back in. That's the oil light, this red one. If I ground it, you see it coming on. So it's just the ground until it gets oil pressure and then it pushes it off ground. All right, and that's the battery hold down. So on the PTO belt, just get the belt on, on the PTO. Get the spring ready. We're gonna do the same thing with the strap. I'm just gonna pull it right here. Alright, so the last belt is just for the hydraulics. It goes from the idler pulley to this bolt. Alright, we're just gonna clean up the exhaust a little bit. Alright, so these are the old ones. These are the new ones. This came with the actual engine in the bag. How to use short sockets, long sockets, medium sockets.
it, that's what we're rolling with. Okay. Not too scared. It says 12.79. Now we're gonna start it and see what happens. So we're not charging. be connected directly to the charging circuit then I found a fuse box and I just went straight for the charging fuse put a new 20 in and it didn't pop when I put it in so with the new fuse now we're at 12.72 and also found this piece it bolts like this and that's where the braces go. So I found this on the garage floor. This whole plan just busted off. And this one still got the, the place to go into the, the head right there. 